Hey friends, it's another week, another review. I'm staying consistent, like I told you. But today I was supposed to be doing a backpack review and I've had those shots kind of lined up. But something came in today that is making me change my schedule a bit. And while that's unfortunate because I had that review kind of lined up, I wanted to make sure that this was shot before I actually do that review of that product that just came in. And the product that is gonna predecess the next week's review is these Neurophones, the original ones, uh, the ones from like two years ago. So obviously this company has evolved since then and grown a lot, but they are a headphone that I was extremely interested in because they were so different. Again, I have, have a lot of like wired headphones, Bluetooth headphones, earbuds, a bunch of stuff, but this was extremely different to me, so it was intriguing. Um, came at a pretty price, but I don't re necessarily regret this decision. I regret not shooting a review on this faster because these are now vintage. They are no longer the new new, um, and the company probably has updated these since. But I do wanna do this review, so let's get into the spec and build. Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up. Before we go further into the deep details of the headphones themselves, I think it's only right to start by talking about the Nora company itself. You know, reviews on YouTube, they go over these big companies that have long-standing histories, but Nura is relatively new in that spectrum. They're much younger than the Sony and Boses of the world. They started in 2015 um, in Australia. And this company was founded by Dr. Campbell, Dr. Pietrov, and Cal Slater, which they decided to make a headphone around the research done by Dr. Campbell at the University of Melbourne. And he was studying Octa or auto acoustics. And that is, is what they're doing with these headphones. The headphone itself or auto acoustics is a way to measure the hearing sensitivity to different frequencies. So it sends tones through your ear, measures that, and then develops a sound profile. And that's what these headphones use as a baseline. While they can render neutral sounds, they do try to optimize your listening experience through auto acoustics. So I think that's extremely unique and so did a lot of people. So after starting their company in 2015, they started the first Kickstarter in 2016. Got a lot of praise, got a lot of press. They raised about $1.8 million. And from there, they started shipping units in 2017, I believe. Mine was, I think, the 515th unit produced and that shipped late 2017, early 2018. I wasn't part of the Kickstarter. I purchased it after the Kickstarter had concluded, uh, but my unit is from early 2017, or sorry, late 2017, early 2018. Forgot when I bought it. But that's just for perspective of, I got one of the earlier units. They've evolved ever since then. So they've introduced a lot of things that I will mention throughout the review of things that they've improved. So that's something that I want you to keep in, in mind of is mine's an older unit, but I'll tell you how they've improved over the years. But from there, I think that kind of tells you everything that you need to know about the history of Nura. And now we can get into the building specs. The majority of the headphone is constructed from lightweight aluminium that is painted with a matte black color. The headband has some steel reinforcements and padded with hypoallergenic silicon. The headband is extremely flexible and durable while keeping a relatively light clamp. The ear cups are relatively deep and padded with the same silicon as the headband. The ear cups are also a house for the microphones and have a wonderful ventilation system that prevents overheating without causing sound leakage. On the bottom of the right ear cup is a proprietary charging port. Yep, this headphone has a special cable that you have to keep track of. I really hated this for travel because sometimes I'd forget the cable. Additionally, at the time, they didn't have additional cords for the 3.5 jack to use with in-flight entertainment systems. Since their release, they've included those cables and provided more flexibility. But I would have preferred if it was just a USB-C input for ease as well as the removed need for the giant input hole on the bottom of the ear cup. In terms of looks, the headphones have an attractive design. They have a nice bridge of retro and modern design languages. 
despite being 30% heavier than the Sony 1000 X M3s, they don't feel overly bulky. There's a lot of nice attention to detail, with the lines, screws, transitions between materials, leaving everything smooth and cohesive. The touchpads are quite responsive and provide a strong and mechanically audible feedback that confirms taps. The touchpads are reliable in dry conditions, but can get confused by rain. Luckily, they are responsive enough to use through a hood, which was great for me in these northeast winters. They can accept single and double taps on both ear cups, leaving you with four options for controls that can be manipulated through the application. You can set the controls to volume, active noise cancelling, social modes, track control, start and pause. And yes, that's a lot of options, but there's not enough tap options to accommodate everything that I want, which leaves me still needing my phone to do everything I'd normally be able to do on modern wireless headphones. Currently I have my left side controlling ANC and immersion, and the right side controlling play, pause, and next track. So to toggle volume or go previous track, I have to reach for my phone. This is where I wish they would include a triple tap or a hold feature on those touchpads so that I have more access to controls and not rely on my phone as much. This is something that we see in the Sennheiser True Wireless 2s and I wonder if they can push this with a firmware update because they've done crazier magic like introduce active noise cancelling <laughs> through firmware. So I'm wondering if they can introduce uh, a tap recognition for a third tap because that would give me everything that I would need. Now that we've gone over all the regular headphone things, let's get into what makes the Neurophone truly unique. The Neurophones have a Inna Ova design, which is a 40mm over-ear driver and a 15mm in-ear driver. The goal is to give you the isolation of an in-ear with the stage of an over-ear to create a uniquely clear and thumpy experience to make you feel like you're live with the music. My model didn't have different size ear tips, however, the new versions come with additional sizing. Luckily, the stock ones on the original model did still fit me well. I did notice that the ear tips mesh did accumulate wax over time so regular cleaning is encouraged, but also that mesh seems to wear over time. It doesn't affect the sound quality, but it is something that I noticed. This Inna Ova design is the key to their main tech, which is their octo-acoustic emission. Let's get into the meat of this, which centers around the Nura app. The app helps you figure out your fit and ensures that you have a good seal. From there, it'll walk you through a two-minute process and analyze your hearing to return a sound profile that is tailored to maximize your listening experience. Here's a sample of different hearing profiles of me and my friends. Low notes start at the 12 o'clock position and get higher as you move clockwise around the circle. The further from the center, the more sensitive your ears are to that frequency and note. The colors are used to show the difference between your left and right ear. Card and I did a run through of each person's sound profile and shared our thoughts. It was extremely interesting to see how different people hear music as well as how we perceived each other's sound profiles. That test was on 50% Immersion, a feature that we'll get into shortly, and with Usher's song, Don't Waste My Time. It's a very calm, mellow song with a medium range. There's no deep bass or high frequency voices that push the song. It's very, very mild and laid back. It's basically summer. And I think that's the reason why, to me at least, Jason's profile worked the best for me. We noticed that all the profiles had their redeeming qualities based on the song and genre. So here's my take based on a couple hours of listening to all of the people's profiles. Jason's profile is super clear on vocals and unobtrusive in the mids. 
There's no major accentuation on the lows, and it's punchy. I think that's why it works so well with the Usher vibe. His profile was great for voices like Donald Glover on Redbone or Mac Miller on Come Back to Earth. However, it didn't come in so well with powerful voices like Adele or powerful instruments as they came in harsher than the other profiles. The A1's profile on the other side was extremely versatile across all genres. It was more neutral overall and it could take most any song that we threw at it. Jalen Satoy on foreplay with all the various instruments was well reproduced and similarly jazzy artists like FKJ and Masego were perfect for her profile. However, more hard-hitting songs and things with rock vibes, her profile proved to be more muted and it didn't capture the emotion as well to me. Something like Black Keys didn't flow well here. And that's where my profile comes in. It brought the grime of sneaking around out of Childish Gambino's heartbeat and that sunk in, self-contradicting feeling from Arctic Monkeys' Do I Wanna Know? Yet it got me on my feet and amped for Anderson Pack's Come Down. It reproduced grunge and rawness and power of songs better than the other profiles. Where it lacked an accommodation for softer and more classical music, it was the best for those songs with an edge, thump, or tear in it. With all that said, the sound profile is only a piece of the puzzle that makes neurophones hit you in the feels. So these microphones on these headphones are superb. They do an amazing job about replicating voice, and as a result, my uh, calls and conferences came in super clear. They make the active noise cancelling work extremely well, and people don't hear the external noises and wind. And I've actually gotten complimented and asked how I got my voice so clear on, on conference calls. So that's something that, if you do that a lot, these ones are great. Um, active noise cancelling wise, they do a really good job in terms of street noise cafe noise, just anything for the most part. The only time that they pale in comparison is to maybe like the Sony 1000XM3s. I think they do a superior job about giving that isolation tank of like absolutely no noise, even things like, uh, like the airplane. I think these ones still hold up pretty well, probably just a slight step down, but they just don't isolate as much noise of the airplane as much as the Sonys. However, where the, it sort of pales in comparison, or at least the Sony's pale in comparison, and these are vastly superior, is I think the Neurophone's social mode. Um, the microphones are able to balance out what you need and what you don't need um, what, so you can maintain a conversation. So like we've tested the Jabra 75Ts and the uh, Sennheiser True Wireless 2s and they also just a bunch of other over-ear headphones with active noise canceling. A common problem with those are while they can do those ambient noise, transparent mode, whatever you want to call it, you generally still have to bring down your volume to you know, talk to someone and hear them clearly, or they come in extremely robotic and not natural. Neurophone has somehow fixed that with their microphones and voices come in so clear and very, very natural that you don't need to turn down your volume, you can just straight talk to them and it adjusts it for you. I think that was, super easy and I like how they can do that just based on one button click. The thing that that is a little bit perturbing is as natural as the voice sounds, it does give you a super natural feel. And what I'm talking about that is you will feel like you have supernatural hearing because the microphones on these in social mode somehow can make someone who is like 50 feet away sound like they're right next to you. <laughs> So like you're on a city street walking down, you'll be able to hear conversations quite clearly. And it's it just feels like that's your superpower now. The first time I really experienced this was when I was at a dealership trying to get my car serviced. So I put social mode on, trying to wait for my name to be called. And I could literally hear about this kid's football team. I could hear about this upgrade that's being uh, asked for. I could ask, I could hear about the, the lease being negotiated behind me just so clearly, right there, so vivid. I could taste their voices like in my ears. It was so easy to hear them despite how far they were. So I think while it does give you natural tones, really clear audio on the social mode, it might take getting a little bit used to in terms of just overall having it on and hearing your surroundings. Great for situational awareness, but a little bit creepy in terms of personal privacy. The last trick that this unique design can achieve is immersion mode. The best way I could describe it is that you can control how close you are to a woofer at a concert or something similar to that. 
Immersion will add some extra thump to your music and can be fully adjusted using the sliding scale. I find myself changing immersion a lot based on what I'm listening to. If I want more clarity and enunciation, I'll tone it down, but if I want to get amped up or feel certain deeper instruments more, I'll crank up the immersion. The best part of the immersion is that it's able to control the bass and it prevents it from becoming loose and muddy. I generally keep immersion around 60% when I'm shuffling through multi-genre playlists. The last bit I want to visit with the neurophones is actual use. I would say these headphones are for dedicated listening or casual days. They're perfect for getting some isolation when busting out a four-hour podcast during work or relaxing with your favorite tracks on a chill weekend alone. However, for travelers and workout folk, I probably would steer away from these. From the travel side, the headphones are a little heavy for a long haul flight, and the headphones weren't rugged enough to withstand being packed away in a bag without a case. Here's some samples of some damage that my headphones have taken on. Again, I don't really mind. I personally like the fact that they look a little bit distressed, but some people may want their headphones to be more pristine. The big deal breaker for me is that the ear cups would fall off sometimes, and I'll show you a picture of what happens to me during a flight. While the sliders are nice and smooth, I think there's a little looseness in the design. Especially with the light clamp on the headphones overall, I found that the ear cups would move around a lot, causing me to have to readjust. This was especially noticeable when working out. Because the pads stick out, I found myself pausing my music during overhead lifts, pull-ups, or hanging leg raises. On the upside, the ventilation system did a good job and I didn't feel like I was overheating despite all the sweat that was accumulating in the ear cups. While it's not a pretty sight, it's better than the sweat being absorbed into the leather and fabric like it would on my Sony 1000Xs. The Neurophones just required a quick wipe, but then again, I wouldn't choose this as my first workout headset. Lastly, I wanted to mention ear fatigue. I used these as my daily drivers for 4 months on my previous project and my ears got tired from the ear tips. I think the design leaves a lot of pressure on the ear tips, and with the weight of the headphones and wearing them everywhere, my ear canals probably got stressed. Switching back to traditional over-ears were a relief after that 4 month period. However, by no means do I think that this is a deal breaker. I think the neurophones are out of this world, but more of a side dish or dessert, not your main course. Despite me using other headphones as my daily drivers, I always find myself reaching for my neurophones when I'm not working or I want to have some fun and play with my music. It's absolutely one of my weekend favorites. So overall, the Neurophones deliver. They have such a unique offering, yet providing a strong baseline for what anyone would expect in a wireless headphone. Also, I wanna really make some shine here for the Neuro company themselves, and I think that's just a company that you should probably follow. They do a really good job about listening to their consumers. I, mean, I bought these headphones, you know, early 2018, it's been two years and they've already improved their product and listened to their customers. And I think that's a great sign of a company. They don't have everything perfect yet, you know? We talked about the build, the ruggedness, you know, it's suitability for travel and workout. And those things can all be improved on in later iterations. But it seems that they are listening to their consumers and what they want, and that they're adding those little accessories and features that they're looking for. So one can only hope that they're going to be adding more functionality to the touchpads and changing maybe the build a little bit for all sorts of scenarios. Again, these headphones are perfect for a secondary set of over-ears or in-ears or in-over-ears or whatever you want to call them. Um, especially if you are a power listener and really want to tune into your music on a weekend or if you are a city commuter and you're just doing you know, errands or shopping or hanging out in a cafe, they're gonna sap out that noise, get you your personal space in a crowded area, and, you know, give you that fun and play with the music that other headphones can't give you. So, again, Neuro's done a beautiful job here and I can't recommend them enough. $400 price point, obviously, so definitely make this a consideration um, when figuring out what your headphone is going to be. Probably not your daily drivers, but definitely a strong, strong, strong offering here. So again, we did review this slightly early and that's because they are evolving their products. And again, this goes into the fact that they're listening to their customers and seeing what they would want next. So that's when these would come in, the Neural Loops. They will be next week's review. And I'm testing these out right now. They're charging. So we'll start getting into it after this review goes up. But I appreciate that you guys are continually subscribing. The numbers are going up every week and I love seeing that. Very much the same, I love the engagement on the comments. I love having you guys tell me what you like seeing, what you don't like seeing, 
what you hope to see in the future, as well as input on how to help me improve the channel and the quality of these videos. So it's really good engaging with you guys, especially in times like this, any conversation is good. So keep it coming. And on that note, please consider subscribing, liking, commenting, do all the things that you normally do on a video you like and love. And I'll see you next week. Appreciate you. Peace.